today we're going to face swap some people from Saved by the Bell. So I'm going to show you the assignment in Google Classroom. Oh, that's not the right screen. Story of my whole, whole entire life. Here we go. Okay. So you're supposed to open the photo, the open the picture in Photoshop, and you're going to do the following task. You're going to crop it to five by seven with a uh, resolution of 300 PPI. You're going to swap Zach and Mr. Building's face. I've also on this assignment included a link so that you can see who Zach is and who Mr. Building is, uh, because I'm sure you're not familiar. A lot of you guys aren't familiar with the characters here. And then you're going to get rid of the brass buttons on Lisa's jacket. You can also figure out who Lisa is with this link. That's Lisa. You will give AC Slater a pair of sunglasses and a tattoo. And then you're going to upload your rendition of this document to Google Classroom. So the one thing that I know you already know how to do is how to crop and set your size and resolution. And so I'm not going to go into that. And you've used your clone stamp a lot. So I'm not going to go into that, but I do want to help you out with the face swap. I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, there's a million ways that it can be done. I'm going to show you how I would do it. So my first starting point, obviously, is going to be to identify who's who. So this is Mr. Building over here. And this is Zach. So we're only swapping their face. We're not doing their hair and all that good stuff, this, which is, makes it a lot easier just doing the face. So I'm going to show you what I would do. I would get my Quick Select tool, and I would just kind of drag over his face. I'll zoom in so I can make sure I'm getting all the good details here. Just and that's honestly that's good enough. I don't really want his hair. I'm gonna so to select something, you just make sure that this plus is selected up here. And to deselect it, so right now this is all selected. I got his hair and I didn't really want it. You're gonna hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and go over what it is that you want to deselect or subtract from your selection. So the plus side plus sign adds to the selection and the minus sign takes away from the selection which makes perfect sense whenever you think about it so I'm not even worried about his ear so we're gonna go with that I'm going to um, use this as my selection I'm gonna right click and I'm going to say layer via copy and what's gonna happen is what's in this what's inside these little running ants what's selected is going to be made a co we're gonna make a copy of that and it's gonna become its own layer so I layer via copy and now you see I have a layer one I'm going to name this layer Mr. Building. Okay. All right, we're going to do the same thing for Zach. I'm going to scroll over and down. I'm going to select his face. You see, I got the plus sign. We're selecting. Oops, got to get on the right layer. We're selecting with the plus sign Zach. All right, and what happens to Zach is we end up getting part of someone's shirt. So I'm going to hold down the Zoom so you can see it. I'm holding the Alt key. Go over that to deselect that because I don't want it. I don't want her shirt. It's not important to me. Okay. And make sure I got this all the way I want it. Alt and deselect some more. Okay. Right click. Same thing. Layer via copy. I have a new copy. And I'm going to call this one Zach. All right. So from there, we just have to, to well, to begin with, we're going to move them. So I'm going to take my move tool, move Zach over here, and move Mr. Building over here. Now what you hopefully notice, some people may notice, some people may not, is Zach's face is kind of pointing the other direction. It's kind of looking off to the, well, my left and not necessarily the way his is. He's kind of looking more to the right. So I'm going to go back to Zach's face, bring it over here. It doesn't really match up, so we're going to flip it. And the way I do that is I'm going to click on just just lightly click on one of these sizing handles and I'm going to change my width to negative 100 and it flips. And we can go over here on the edge and we can rotate it. Scroll, scroll, scroll. There we go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Too much. Too much. Okay. Rotate it and try to get it you know kind of aligned the way it's supposed to be. Now the easiest way to do the alignment to make sure it's lined up properly really with the other person is to adjust the opacity of that layer. So what that means, if something is transparent, it's going to have a zero opacity, and if something is solid, it'll have a hundred. So let's put it at like 50. And this way, you can kind of see the size and angle. What I like to do is kind of line up their eyes and make sure they're kind of sort of angled the same, or their mouth, either one. Um, so that's, yeah, that's pretty 
relatively close. It's close enough. I'm good with that. All right, so now I know what I've got. I'm going to go back and put Zach at 100% opacity. And we're going to get rid of the parts that we don't need. So the way I would do that is I'm going to get my eraser tool. This is one way anyway. Get my eraser tool and I'm going to get it a good size. Like that's clearly too big. Okay, I'm going to shrink it with my handy dandy little bracket button. And let's see what we're, ah, my opacity is at 1%. That's why I wasn't doing anything. Go back, I messed up somewhere. Okay, come back. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to put my opacity at 100%, and, and I'm going to kind of just erase some around these edges. And you see that's kind of hard. That's not blending well. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay, we're going to go over here and change our hardness. And what that makes is, if I leave it at 100 and I click once, you can kind of see what those edges look like. If I put it at 50%, and I click once, you can see, hopefully, that there's a very obvious difference in how well that blends. So that's what we're going to go with. We're going to use a 50% opacity for now, or 50% hardness. And I'm actually going to take my opacity down to 50% as well, just so that as I'm erasing, this kind of blends out. Make sure I'm going to let him keep his ears. I'll let him keep Mr. Belding's ears. I don't really necessarily need Zach's ears. I'm going to erase around here, kind of feather it out until it gets to where it looks pretty natural, which is going to be a little harder to do. Okay, especially right here. Kind of, there we go. That doesn't look too bad. Now, as you get closer to center, you can change this opacity a little bit more. To blend it a little tighter, like where his forehead's a little shiny and his skin tone's slightly different, might want to blend that a little bit better. Might take a few clicks, especially once you get that opacity down. But overall, that doesn't look too too terribly bad. I do notice that we have a little Mr. Building has a little fine line over the, some some crow's feet that we need to deal with, but overall, I'm pretty satisfied with that. And I've already deleted, so erased, so I can't really do anything with that. I can't get it back. That's one one method. Looks pretty decent. All right, the, the other method I'm going to show you over here. It's going to allow me to put things back where I found them. So if I erase something, I can put it back. So same same general concept. I'm going to make sure I'm on the correct ta um, layer, which I'm not. Uh, I want to be on Mr. Building's layer. Put his face where it needs to be. Again, he's facing the opposite direction, kind of. So I'm going to negative 100. And rotate to where I want it to be. And I'm going to use that opacity again. Just sort of figure out exactly where I want his face. This will help with not only um, placement, but size, because you can kind of make sure their eyes are about the same width apart. Obviously, everybody's eyes are not always the same width or same distance apart, but it helps you get a pretty decent idea. Okay, and make sure the teeth are lined up and all that kind of stuff, you know, within reason. Okay, that looks mostly okay. So I'm going to go with that. Change this opacity back to 100%. And this time, I'm going to create a mask. I'm going to create a layer mask. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that my correct layer is selected and say add layer mask. And you notice that there is a little thumbnail now beside this layer. On this thumbnail, you can do two things. You can use your paintbrush tool to color in black or white. Now, currently it's black. And you see whenever I color in black, it erases. And whenever I color in white, if I swap these two, it brings back whatever I erased. Okay. Let me put this opacity at 100%, just so you can see. Oops. All right. So I'm going to color with black right down his face. All right. And then I'm going to come back over that with white and go in it. So basically what this does, it's, it's, it's a mask. So if you are painting in black, it is erasing something or hiding something. If you are masking something, basically. If you're painting in white, it's bringing that back. So we're going to paint in black. 
and this works basically the same. You still have hardness on your brushes. Let me put that back to 50%. And you still have hardness on your opacity. I'm going to put that back to 50% also. And, and actually, no. Leave it at 100. We're going to just kind of get this dude's neck a little bit cleaner. Okay, that's and now we're going to go to 50. Now, 50% with black. Make sure we're painting in black. And make sure that we're painting on. I don't, no wonder it's not reading to me. Make sure you're painting on the mask, not on the image itself. Because that will definitely change the way things appear. Just gonna go across this a few times, try to get it looking pretty decent. Now you can see there's a pretty relatively obvious line across here, so I'm gonna knock my opacity down to 25% and go over that. Oops. Go over that a little bit more just to sort of blend it slightly better. I'm gonna go around these edges a little more, clean that up a little. But overall, it looks pretty good. Now, if I decided that I did not want to cover this quite as much. Maybe I'd erase a little too much here. I could always switch back to my white and paint it back in if I wanted to. Okay, so that is how I would do the face swap portion of this assignment. And again, you're free to kind of do it however you want, but those are the two options that I would use. Masks are great because you don't lose any data. You're just sort of covering it up. Um, the other way with the erase is okay too, but you lose a lot of data. So the mask is probably the better of the two options. All right. If you have questions, please ask. Let me make sure there wasn't anything else I wanted to go through. Oh, okay. So AC Slater, you want to give him a pair of sunglasses and a tattoo. So here's what I would do. I would say I would Google tattoo on white background or on a transparent background, but I'll show you why I said white. This one looks decent enough. Nope. That one is not free. Let's find something. Oh, we'll go with this for the moment. Open that up in Photoshop right quick. And here's another tool that I forgot to add to my favorite tools video, but this one is amazing. So what you're going to do to get rid of this white background, if I just click this and drag it to my Saved by the Bell picture and try to put it on his arm, that's what I have. I can't work with that because it's white. Can't use that. So what you can do is use your magic eraser tool. So if you find your eraser, right click on it, and choose magic eraser and click on that white portion. It gets rid of pretty much all of it. And if you if it doesn't get rid of enough of it, I'll show you there's still a little bit of white fuzz on here. Um, you can adjust your tolerance. So if I put my tolerance at 50, I think 32 is like standard. Um, put it lower if I want to. You can kind of see that it makes a difference. I'm going to leave it high and put it back at 32, which is the default. Okay, get rid of most of the white enough for what I'm trying to accomplish here. And then we're going to resize it. Shrink it down. And turn it so that way it looks legit. Press the enter key on my keyboard to lock in my changes. Control D to deselect. And now AC Slater has a tattoo. Okay. The other things I think you can handle on your own, 